Hello guys, welcome back. I'm sorry to do this with a still background, but the camera's still on the fritz. I, I do apologize. It comes back for a second and then it's gone. Um, somebody asked me a really great question and I do not always do videos if you ask questions, so don't think I'm playing favorites. It's just if I don't have anything more to say, I won't. Um, they asked if I've ever known any asexual and aromantic people, and yes, it is two different things who are pagans. And yes, of course I have. You can be a pagan, you can be a witch. Um, speaking as a gay person, I can tell you it's go the hardest thing is going to find something that you can read and doesn't make you go, <gasps> um, you know, as a pansexual gender fluid person myself, which is not the same as asexual and aromantic for all the people out there taking crib notes, it's hard to read some of the literature and some of the religious practices, you know, in Wicca or, you know, modern paganism or anything. Because it's usually there's a heavily slant, slanted towards doing romance magic so you can fall in love. And, you know, there are some progressive people, but a lot of people, you know, especially straight people that don't know any better. Sorry, straight people. Not really. Um, You know, there's this thing of... Oh, it, this is the way that's natural to be because it's the way I naturally am. So I get it. Um, it's why a lot of people leave Wicca because it's usually male and female meet and have a lot of babies and we're going to do the great right. And, you know, everybody else in the room's like, no, please, no. So, yeah, the hardest thing is going to be finding your own spiritual path. I'm pansexual and, you know, gender fluid. And there are days I wake up and I'm like, no gender at all. And there are days I wake up and I, there's just no attraction there for anyone at all. It's like, it's normal how my body phases and I just roll with it. So I can't speak as an asexual or aromantic, but, you know, it's not going to change how the gods treat you. And you might actually find out it's, you know... Once you can find your own path, you'll find out that you can still have deep personal relationships with a deity. Say it's Loki, because this is his channel. I got, yeah. Or it's, in Loki's sexuality, we cover everything. Uh, I got, uh -huh, back here. And, you know, it, you will find a lot of gods that are actually more that inclined. Um, Believe me, if they had their choice between someone that's asexual and aromantic... And someone that is flinging themselves at the god going, love me, love me now. They would prefer the asexual or aromantic person. I know gods that they just get the heebie-jeebies because they see the kind of novels people write and everything else. And they just kind of look at us like, Ugh. you know, especially Hades. Oh, please do not bring up those erotic Hades novels around him. Just, just don't. Um, you know, um... The thing you'll have to understand, too, is that everyone is as they naturally are, and you will find the god, goddess, um, fairy, whatever that you choose to work with, that's going to help you learn to love and accept yourself. Um, I think if people were honest, they would admit that, you know, even people that can feel romantic attraction or sexual attraction don't go around, like, at 24-7, um, it's why we have so much divorce. You meet someone, if you're capable, you know, naturally built that way, you fall in love. It doesn't last forever in a lot of cases. There's this saying that, you know, even for people that have the capacity for romantic love, you have to work at love. You fall in guano, you don't fall in love. You have to work at that stuff. And you may find it changes from romantic love to just kind of loving somebody to, eh, you're used to them and you just tolerate them and you have no emotional attachment whatsoever. It could just be that, you know, they're going from being um, romantic to aromantic. And, you know, that's perfectly okay. Our sexuality, by the way, does not have to, but can change. Our romantic feelings can change over time. Um, I can't tell you how many horrified people I've seen right into the Savage Love column that I have been... Such a gay twink for 60 years of my life, and I'm in love with a woman. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It changes. We don't know why it changes. Hormones, something in the brain. I don't know. But it, it changes. It does. So it can change over your life. So, you know, you might feel you'll be this way forever. And you may be, and you may not be. Um, 
I can again not speak to asexual or aromantic, you know, personally, but you know, it, it, it's it's who you are, and you will find the right one to help you, you know, accept that and to embrace it fully, and you will actually find gods that will be kind of relieved that you're not just flinging yourself at them in wild abandon, because I know it seems like every other pagan is getting up to hijinks with the gods and goddesses and marrying them by the boatload and everything else. Um, that's kind of overrated. And marriage is just, it's just a war. It's just a partnership. It may or may not be romantic. There are people that enter marriages. You know, there's a pin I just saw on um, Pinterest because I'm like, I'm going to my favorite place for uh, inspiration. There's a, a sexual pin that I believe in traditional marriage. It's just not worth if it's not for money, land, or power. And, you know, that was a thing. Romantic love is a fairly new notion. You, you married or your parents married you off, depending on the kind of dowry you had, or you married for political alliance. Um, we kind of back put romantic love into a lot of stuff. It, did people not fall in love back then? Of course they fell in love, but that usually had very little to do with marriage. Um, if you were lucky, you did fall in love and you did find affection for your partner, but quite often it was the guy that could pay your parents most for you, or it was somebody that bought you, or, you know, all the other horrifying uh, modes of marriage they had. And so it's not... It's not something to lose sleep over. If you're naturally asexual, naturally aromantic, the gods aren't going to have a problem with that. It's why I love the Greek gods. I have a special place in my heart for them. They've got a god or goddess for absolutely everything, and most of them are pretty free spirits. And you know, they don't they don't care which way you know we are built. It, they don't have to join us, as I was actually working on the Greek temples today, and Hermes pointed out, they really don't care who we fall in love with or don't. They really don't care about our sexuality, provided we're not doing anything violent or legal or immoral in nature. And by immoral, I mean we have common decency on this planet. We all agree that it should be consenting adults. That's what I mean. Um... They don't care, so they don't care who we fall in love with. They don't care how we shack up with, as long as it's consenting adults. But, you know, they don't have to join us, is how he put it very politely. Because I had gotten asked a question and then went and worked on temples. He said, you know, they don't care. They, they really don't. It's, you know, they love us and they care about us, but they don't care if we fall in love or not. They don't care if we have sexual relations or not. It's not, you know, it's not Christianity. It's not the heteronormative, hallmark-driven world where everyone has to fall in love and, and you know, it's not like that. So, um, you'll be perfectly happy and perfectly fine. You might find, like, I had to because there's just nothing for pansexuals, um, other than pan memes. Um, <laughs> He, he, I, I have the world's largest collection, I think, of, yes, I really do love pans. Um, you know, there's really nothing out there that will be tailored to you, or you might feel people will try to include you, but you're like, you're really not getting what I am at all. Probably have to build kind of your own version of spirituality, and there are groups out there, or there is at least, you know, tumblers out there, Reddit, or whatever you want to lurk on if you aren't comfortable talking to people. And I do it all the time. I go to Reddit and Tumblr all the time. I'm not a member of either, but I'm like, you know what? I just want your information. I don't like humans. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I, I'm just here for information. I don't want friends. I don't even have any friends on Steam, man. I'm like, every friend request, nope, just, it's nothing about you personally. Leave me alone. So, <laughs> if somebody's grouchy and antisocial as me, you can work with the gods, you can. It, it'll be okay. You will find your way. You might, like I said, just find out you have to make your own spirituality, make your own pagan and Wiccan practices, whatever flavor you're comfortable being. Because there's just not going to be a ton of material. And sometimes it feels kind of hollow when you take something that was, the boy and the girl fell in love and they went, mm -hmm, and you're like, oh. so, <laughs> and, and you're like, Yuck, no, please get away from me. Um, and, and you might have to then take, a, you know, your own rituals and make up your own rituals and do your own stuff. I know it seems like every everything out there is about either sex or romantic love. It really isn't. It's just that's what most people 
want, so that is what gets talked about the most, but you will have a fully productive and happy life being as you are. You can certainly be a sexual aromantic, any kind of orientation, any kind of romantic orientation, and still get along with the gods. Practice with any god or goddess. Um, nobody can gatekeep. People will try, but you can practice with anyone you want. I find there are gods I actually prefer because, in my experience, they will very much like not to talk about hurt, hurts and flowers emotions. Um, gods like Hades, Odin's not known for being overly flower or flowery or romantic. Um, usually, any of the death deities, any of the deities known to have logic and reason, they're usually kind of happy and pleasantly surprised to meet someone that's not looking at them and going, "Love me." You have to love me. I bought you presents. <laughs> and I'm saying that in, as a person that's openly, you know, the dreaded G word. But, you know, they appreciate not every human flinging themselves at them in Wild Abandoned, too. So, you know, you do you. You'll just have to, like I said, probably find your own practice. But we all do, if we're being real. We all have to find our own practice. So... If you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.